ask and you shall receive, and maybe even more than you bargained for. Listen in and learn how. I'm Kelly Wilkness here with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 407, Live Well, Sell Over Ask. Today we're going to talk about things that you might want to add or highlight in your home while you're living there so you can enjoy them and set yourself up for a crazy bidding war and get more than you ask for for your home when and if the time comes to sell it. You know, that's so interesting. Uh, The house across the street from me, my builder built that house after we moved in and they Uh, weren't really sure they were ready to move they put it on the market and they put it on basically they thought was a very high number do you know they got three offers over asking Mm. well your builder does a very nice job i can attest to that and uh they the deal they worked out was not only did this guy pay more than they were asking for but he let them stay in it for a month for free before he was able to move in wow i'll buy it for more than you want to sell it for, and you can still keep living there. That's a deal. So the point is, you can get more than asking in some markets if if you get the right buyer, if the house is right. Uh, so it does happen. That's what I want to say. Oh, yeah. Well, what we're going to talk about today is specific things that you can add to your home or features that you might want to consider, including in your home, whether it's uh, an older home or certainly if you have an opportunity to build from scratch, you can work all these things into your plan. But the thing we always say to you is, you know, don't, in a sense, dress up your house or do extra things right before you call the real estate agent to sell it. Do these things, think about these things, and then enjoy the features that you decide to add while you're living there. That's why we called it live well, sell over ask. Because maybe you're never going to sell your house, but you could be making choices that could set you up for a, you know a really nice extra bundle of cash when and if the time comes for you to sell the home. I think what we're saying too is, Keep this in mind. It's not just about people who are ready to sell their house right now. It's really more for you to think about, should I do this update to my house? Is this going to add value to my house or is it not? Because if you're thinking, I'm going to move out of my house in five years, well, then you've got to think about what you're doing to the house. Are you going to get your money back? So we're not suggesting that you do any of these things just to sell for more because if you're getting ready to sell your house, Ripping out your kitchen and redoing it, depending on if your kitchen. Well, depends. I mean, if your kitchen is just tear down shape right now, then it might be a great idea. But if it's in pretty good shape, if it's pretty comparable to your neighbors, you're going to lose a lot of money. So we're not suggesting you should do all these things, but just kind of keep these things in mind. If you're thinking about doing one of these things, it might really help you down the road is really what we're trying to say. Exactly. So selling or not selling, these are features to consider, and we're going to talk about what buyers are looking for in 2020. And I will say the house across the street had a lot of the features that we're going to mention here, like an outdoor kitchen. Ding, ding, ding. Right, and a chef's kitchen. So those things are, uh, oh, well, I didn't mean to already start, but But that's okay. We must begin. There's the first two right there. Yeah, well, you can't go wrong with a a really well-appointed kitchen if you're going to use it uh, and enjoy it while you're there. I totally agree with Anita. Um, Yes, I I said don't do it, but yes, if your kitchen is, you know, the doors are hanging off the cabinets and there's curling linoleum, clearly you're going to want to do something, you know, but go get yourself some IKEA cabinets and, you know, put down some, you know, fresh linoleum. Don't go and hit, you know, all the marks and put in all this expensive countertops and all of these things because people are going to they know they're paying for that and if it's not spot on their style or look then they're not going to want to pay the extra for that because they're going to want to do it themselves right right so if we were to sell you know the mountain house that we is a vacation rental if we were going to sell it this year which we're not going to I would definitely read completely redo the kitchen because I know we can make oh I know we'll make money on it because right now the kitchen is way below the look of the uh, of comparable kitchens in that neighborhood 
But if yours is about the same, then you're really not going to make money on it. So, yeah. Right. So I think I knew what you meant. I know you knew. And everybody <laughs> knows. You all know. So what are some other things that we, that, you know, that are sort of like, you know, when you go and looking at houses, right, it, sometimes it comes down to, you know, well, that one has this that mm -hmm. one has that maybe they're comparable maybe they're in the same neighborhood maybe in the same school district but s another house might just have this extra thing so what are those these extra things that buyers seem to be looking for right now some of them when we were doing the research you know i agree with um, mm -hmm. i have to say several of them i'm like that wouldn't make a hill of beans difference to me and mm -hmm. maybe i wouldn't even want that mm -hmm. i certainly and i wouldn't pay extra for it so you know we'll we'll let you know what our opinions are you know we never hold back <laughs> No, that's right. And I actually have a cautionary tale on the house next to the one across the street that did so well. Oh. I think they may have heard about that house and gotten okay. a little giddy. Oh, right. So the of house, course. People right. Do. So the house next door, they uh, it was it's a 100-year-old house, and they completely updated it last year. So it looks fantastic on the inside. I mean, they did a great job with the redo. It's not a big house because it's a, you know, like a 1910, 1915 bungalow, mm -hmm. uh, which was uh, never that big to begin with. But here's the thing. Because it was from 1915, there was no garage. So they fixed it all up and slapped a big price on it, actually the same price as the house next door that was brand new, that was a lot bigger and that had a two-car garage. This car had no garage. The house had no garage. They overreached. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it just sat there on the market. We all kind of scratched our heads at the price because there was no garage. Well, sure enough, it came off the market, and they just built a garage, and they put it back on the market, and they've actually listed it uh, for a good bit less than the original mm -hmm. list. So I think it's going to go fast now. But anyway. Yeah, so. the, you know, you're probably absolutely right. They got excited about what happened next door and they figured, oh, we can do the same. But then once your house gets on there and it's too high and the buyers are not interested in what's going on and then it gets stale, that's, you know, that's just real estate hell to be in. Right. And I, th and then you don't want it on the market when it says this house has been on the market 450 days. Right. So they took it off, did the work. And I don't know, maybe it has to be off for so long before you list it again. And then they listed it and now it's a fresh new listing. Great. Well, let's get into the features today. So let's mm -hmm. see. We did some research on real estate uh, websites, mm -hmm. and uh, I even talked to a friend of mine who's an expert in the field. Good. She's been a residential and commercial real estate agent for a long time. Um, so Anita's already mentioned a chef's kitchen. Can't go wrong with there. Can I just talk a little bit about what that means first? Yeah, sure. So a chef's kitchen, we're really talking about a kitchen that has, uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be considered professional but we're looking for a professional stove so that's probably a six burner stove a 48 inch stove it's probably going to be gas we're looking for a large prep area maybe a large island we're looking for at least two sinks you want a prep sink in there uh, and then possibly a large refrigerator uh, these are the sort of things that are considered a professional kitchen but while I'm in the kitchen I just wanted to mention this before we move on if you you can also increase the value of your house with just one of these items like just the prep sink or just having a farmhouse sink or just having the professional stove any of those things are going to help you sell your house and I think that kitchen I mean you you chime in here Kelly but I think having a fabulous kitchen is probably one of the most important elements to selling your house for top dollar i think right now it is because the kitchen is you know absolutely the hub of the home and people are very concerned about and people are very into cooking and entertaining at home now more so than they were several years ago and so i think you absolutely can't go wrong well and your instagram i mean what kind of an instagram account are you going to have if you're going to stand in front of a you know a coil stove you have to have <laughs> A big <laughs> stove. You're going to have a very retro Or you're going to be nobody on Instagram. I just don't know how else to Well, which is very true. And gosh, wouldn't that be awful? Um, here's one that I, you know, we read about and I just don't really agree with. So the steam oh. shower. I saw that too. And I don't know anybody that's got a steam shower. 
I do. I know people that have steam showers, but yeah. you know, that's the thing where if you enjoy it, put it in. But I wouldn't expect that, you know, people are going to be flocking to your door because you have a steam shower. You know, if you had a professional range stove and, it, you know, some great appliances, yeah, that's going to do it. And that's going to have keywords in the real estate listing. But I don't know that steam shower would make me you know, jump out of the car at the open house and well, throw I, down a bu bucket of cash. I agree. That's a small market. That's a niche thing, I would think. And again, I live in Houston. If I want steam, I'll walk outside in the summer. I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, go in the shower. I don't think that. I want steam. I don't, I don't really like that. I try to avoid it personally. Yeah. So whatever. Okay. An outdoor kitchen, since we're in the kitchens. Now, you know, obviously certain parts of the country, this is more important. But I think also this is one of those things where, you know, your, uh, your, your buyers, your potential buyers might be sort of in, sort of dreamy about it. Oh, we're going to entertain so much. We're going to have people mm. over. I'm going to mm. go and get all this great, you know, melamine plates. And it's going to be so fun. And we're going to have barbecues and stuff. And maybe they do, or maybe they'd never, never do that. And, uh, but, you know, it's something nice to have. A lot of people like to grill outside. So it doesn't have to be a complete replica of an indoor kitchen with a sink and all that. You could just simply have like a built-in barbecue with some sort of countertop. Maybe you've got uh, some electricity. You can put a fridge out there. Or, you know, maybe when you're doing the open house, and we can talk about staging a little bit today too, but that's like a whole other topic. Maybe you just put a really uh, darling galvanized bucket on that counter and pour some ice in it and, and put some waters in it that the, the people can have while they're walking around. You know, it gives the sense of an outdoor kitchen. So it is something that I think could be attractive to some people, but I would certainly wouldn't put something in like that just to attract buyers. Isn't that the truth? And I think that's one of those things that sounds so romantic, but in the reality, most people don't really use it that much. Right. So I think if you were thinking that way, maybe just put your grill out there. You know, you don't have to set up the whole kitchen, but even I've seen some nice setups where it's a very professional looking ice Stay, a stand with ice where you put your drinks in it and right. it's kind of one, one of those, those yeah that's just nice coolers and things like right. that like you said and then some seating I, I think that would go a long way just it's set up so that you could uh, entertain out there so uh, interestingly like the steam kitchen I saw pizza oven which sounds so exciting but that's kind of a lot of space for something if you are not a pizza lover yeah I was shocked to see that Right. Yeah. How many people? Because I don't even know what it takes. Do you have to put, you know, charcoals in there? I, you know, what? how does this thing work? So I don't know. I think it's wood. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend who has one and she has it in her outdoor kitchen and she makes, she's a complete foodie and makes the most delicious pizzas. But I would only want to go to Mary's house and have her make me the pizza because she also has like flour all over her when she's doing it and she oh, really gets into it. Wow. I don't see having that inside my house. Plus you would just bake in used to. Oh my God. No, 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 no. We can't, we can't do that. In fact, speaking of baking, heated floors, not going to go over well here in Houston. Well, not in Houston. Yeah, if you're in Canada, it's probably great. Right. But a friend of mine, and she had married an architect, and I, they were redoing this house in Massachusetts. And I remember, I mean, I still remember this. This is 30 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe. She um, told me they were having heated floors. I just thought that was the most fabulous thing. Like, that just seemed very luxurious to me. So I don't know. I could be on the fence about that. But again, that's certainly not something you're going to think about putting in last minute. You know, if you live somewhere where it's cold and you have tiled floors or, you know, if you do it in your kitchen or your bathroom, um, it, I mean, it could be great. But, you know, that's something you want to think about that, you know, it's going to work for you and your family, not for resale. So again, it was one of those things on the list that I was like, hmm, really? Nice, but I don't know that's going to be like lining the people up outside. Here's a, a thing that I think does, especially now, and we've discussed this uh, at a couple of different episodes, but the fact that so many people work at home now and you need to have a dedicated workspace. Well, yeah, I think in our trends issue, which we can link to here, we talked about that in particular. So a separate garage studio, like Anita's studio apartment or my barn or even a shed that can be used as a workspace. I think that can really attract people. And that's something of value. I mean, they can see that it, if I got this, then I don't have to rent a space on Main Street for my 
whatever office, or I don't have to get a space at a WeWork or something like that, or hey, I don't have to be sitting at the dining room table with, you know, the toddlers, you know, playing around me and the dogs barking. I can go out here and get my work done. As far as I'm concerned, I would pay more. If there was a bidding war, I would throw more down on a house that had a separate space. Well, I so agree. And we've got our apartment above the garage. And this was something that I was looking for when we were looking to build and we were looking at houses because you know, we've got the daughter with a disability. I didn't know if we would ever have need live in help. Uh, I didn't know if the other daughter was ever going to move out. She's still here. And uh, <laughs> she's 24. <laughs> and although she told me, Evie, honey, just don't listen to this part. Your no, 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 don't listen. No, no, no. We love having you. No, no, no. We love She's She's great having it home. But at one point I said, you know, when she was in high school, I said, oh, we've got the garage apartment. So, you know, if you wanted to move out, that's an option. That's not, you know, you could kind of, it's kind of like you've got your own place, but you don't. Mm-hmm. And she said, well, but why would I move over there? <laughs> why would I move all the way up over there? I mean, it's, it's across, you know, it's, it's five steps from the back of the house. <laughs> so anyway, but I felt like, and then plus, you know, my mom is older. I thought she might end up with us at some point. And so it was very important to me for that reason. But also in our neighborhood, Garage apartments are very common, and a lot of people rent them out for Airbnb. Remember, I was considering that, or you can rent them out long term. There's so much flexibility. You can use it as an office space. I use this as a warehouse space when we had our online store. So, yeah, I think definitely people would pay more, and it's a massive value, especially if you have guests. They have their own space, and they're not, you know, it's it's just not as imposing on the family. People, guests can come and get up whenever they want. It's not going to bother you know, the people in the main house. I think it's really one of the best investments. Yeah, I agree. So that would be something that I would put high on the list along with the um, professional style, let's say, kitchen, well-appointed kitchen. Um, so I think so far, the ones that we've talked about, I think those would be the two most important to me, uh, something that I would definitely consider you know, throwing a little bit more money at a house if it had those things. Uh, here's something that I think is also been on people's minds for many years when they are looking at houses wood flooring so if you've got particularly if you've got it running through all the rooms or you know all the rooms except for maybe the bathrooms or perhaps the kitchen I think that really does increase the value at your home you always see that if that is a feature in the home you'll always see that listed in the real estate description so I think you can't go wrong with that so if you're thinking about adding or changing the flooring in the home that you're in uh, whether or not you're staying there for five years 10 years the rest of your life you just never know that is a really good investment because I think you will always get your money back with that so I so agree but now if you're in a situation where you're wanting to replace the carpet and you're tired of the carpet and also you're considering the value of your house when you sell it Wood flooring is probably going to be one of your more expensive options. So you, you can look at some other option like the the laminate flooring. Uh, so there are some other options that would be less expensive but still would do so much better than carpet when you're selling your house. And I think you would enjoy it more. Yeah. And if you think, you know, especially if you have an older house, I was helping a couple once you know, like a moderate amount of staging, but basically just going through the rooms of their house and saying, you know, how could you tweak this? How could you tweak that? And there was this cranberry carpeting in like three of the rooms upstairs. And so this was pre going on the market. And I said, can we pull that? Because it's an older home. Can we pull that back and see? Oh my goodness. We pulled it back and under the rug and the padding and all of that was really absolutely beautiful wood flooring that they did not even have to refinish you know it was like you just mopped it and it looked great so we pulled it off in those three rooms i mean i'm i am convinced and she said of course that it did uh i don't know if she was just being nice but i think it really did make a big difference when they were selling the house because the floor was so pretty and just people get the sense of like ew you mean if you like carpeting you really don't want somebody else's carpeting no, isn't that the truth? Oh, I so agree. And it just traps bacteria and all kinds of stuff that you don't even know what's in there. Don't Let's get move her on. started, everybody. Do not get me started on that. Uh, but And then here's something else you'll need for Instagram. Three standing tub. <laughs> are, you st- are you starting another Instagram account? No, 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 because I'm just joking. But, well, I'm just laughing about it because I 
I love a nice tub bath. And I we actually use our freestanding tub. But I don't know that everybody does. I think a lot of people buy it just because it looks good. And when I first wanted one, it was really for the look. So, I mean, I'm making fun of myself more than anything. But uh, anyway, over time, I've decided, oh, this is nice. Hey, look at look at what I have, a freestanding tub. Maybe I'll use it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I guess, but I don't know. I mean, yes, b- buying my house and there was <laughs> the, the bathroom had been pulled apart 35 years ago. And yeah, he just never really got around to fixing it. So there was a, it was completely freestanding tub. It was not attached to any pipes or anything. It was just in the middle of the room <laughs> with a bunch of junk inside of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know. I'm a different kind of home buyer, as we've discussed, and there's probably other people like me out there that are listening. But as, So, you know, I like things sort of like, how can I transform it? So I'm not really the perfect candidate for, you know, necessarily the things that would trigger me to want to buy a house. But definitely the fact that there was a vintage clawfoot tub I mean, I remember talking about that a lot and being excited about it. So if you've got something like that or you can add it to a bathroom, I, and certainly if you're going to use it like Anita has started to do, go for it. And that's not something that, especially if it's freestanding, that's not as if you're ripping up all your carpeting and putting dead hardwood floors. You know, you're buying a tub and putting it in. Well, but a lot of people have a garden tub. Garden tub. That's a tough thing to get out. So you've got to rip that up. I don't even want to think about that. You have that. to knock the house down, take the, a wall out and take the Ugh. garden tub don't tell me that because we're thinking about doing that in, at the mountain house. Oh, we yeah. did that at our last house. But, I mean, that was a long time ago. I don't really remember. I just think I closed my eyes and they somehow got it out. Yeah, I don't think I want to be. Saws. Going. Saws are involved. <laughs> I know. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting, but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing. And it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off. Yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. What about this? A coffered ceiling. 
I think those are beautiful. I don't have one, but they really are a, a beautiful thing. Why don't you explain what that is if people don't know? Well, somebody referred to I think they spelled it wrong in the article that I read, too. I meant to tell you. <laughs> oh, well. Not maybe that I'm they, an expert speller, but oh. Well, like, maybe they don't know what they're talking about then. But that mm-hmm. it's like a waffle ceiling. How's that for description? I guess, yeah, I guess. I mean, yes, okay. It, it, has, it has woodwork in it. Right. And sometimes it's stained, sometimes it's painted. Right. But they're like beams, but they're going both ways. So there's kind of squares, like right. a waffle, really. Right. But it, it doesn't have to be like all like a waffle. You know, mm-hmm. it can have a different design. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have yeah. to be all little squares. So it's what you've talked about a lot, the, the extensive wood molding. It's right. wood molding and doing something to your ceiling. So right. it's doing both of those. Right. So I think that's uh, something. And you know, like we've talked about the moldings, but again, that's a lot of effort to add moldings to your house. So I wouldn't be doing it unless it's something that you are going to really enjoy as well. Yeah. I mean, and I think any sort of interesting ceiling treatment, you know, it's a, it's something that differentiates your house from the one next door, especially if you're living in a place where the houses are very similar, you know, th- that's a way to really distinguish the look and it def- definitely has a more elegant de- you know obviously done right a really elegant look so I, th- I mean I guess that could make a difference here's one who that I really don't think should make a difference again it might be one of those people the things that people are like oh wow that's great that's gonna save us so much money solar panels uh I wish those that, could be a nightmare that that could be good could be bad yes and I wish that I could say um, with complete conviction that if you had solar panels, you'd be saving oodles of money. We looked into it extensively for this house. And if you stay in your home a very long time, particularly if you're the person putting them in. So, you know, maybe for the buyer and it's, they're already there and every, the, it's all been converted and it's all set up properly. But for the person that's putting them in, like if you were thinking about putting this in because you live in Marin County and everybody's really concerned about energy and or in any other place in the country that people are really, buyers would really be in tune with that sort of thing. I, I don't think it's worth the effort, you know, to get, get them some references and, sh- you know, tell them to have a couple of the companies come over and give them an estimate and let them deal with it. I wouldn't put that in to, as a feature only to sell my house. You really have to be there a long time to reap the benefits of solar panel installation. Yeah. And as much as I would hope that, that those would be cost saving and economical and everything, it feels to me like it's something that's just set up to break down. Well, I don't really – we did look into it a lot, and there are – I mean, some of the stuff is pretty indestructible. Again, we live in a place where there's not a heck of a lot of weather, but this mm. is really kind of funny. The, the woman who lives behind us, she would look at the back of the barn, and she came over and made a big stink about it because she saw, like, the solar – I forget the name oh. of the companies, the, the vans in front of oh, our house. Yeah. Uh-huh. And she came marching down the driveway one day, and we were in the midst of construction, and the dust was flying. And you thought, oh, she's she's welcoming me to No, the no. Event. When you saw the look on her face, you knew she was not <laughs> bringing me, uh, you know, a – a plate of cookies or a plant no and so she was not very nice i mean she turned out to be okay but she had her guns blazing but here's the very ironic part of this story she has solar panels stop it i can't see hers (laughs) unless i look out the attic window up here uh, but she didn't want me to have solar panels. So I didn't wow. need somebody making a stink about what I was doing at that time. So we kind of just put that, shelved it. That's a little little mind-boggling. Yeah, but... yeah, yeah. So that to be, uh, you know, taken into consideration too. You know, it does impact your neighbors, what they're looking at. Some of them are not that attractive, especially the ones that are raised off the roof. And you might need city permits and all that business. So anyway. Okay. Yeah. Probably more than you needed to know about solar panels, but... How about from one heat source to another, outdoor fireplaces? What do you think about that? Oh, I think that's a great idea. I, I, I would love to have one. Again, it might be a little hot here, but um, they look great. <laughs> I, I love ours. And let me tell you, you know, again, I'm going to say, Cavett, everything that we're talking about today, if you are going to enjoy it for a period of time, don't put in the fireplace and then 
put the for sale sign on the front lawn. So if you're going to enjoy it, even if you think you're going to be in your house for another couple of years, even you don't know if you're going to sell or not, I think that's something you could invest in. Um, that company that I used, Woodland Direct, and I could put the link in the show notes. They're they're great, and you know you could find someone local that will build you one. But I got estimates for doing that, and I chose their contractor's model, which was probably the mo- the most inexpensive one they have. And I just liked it plain and painted it white. And my handyman just hooked up the gas. So it really oh, wasn't wow. for the the impact that it has in my yard because we don't have a pool. Um, it, it's a focal point. Oh, so right. it kind of makes, you know, it kind of gives you a purpose or, you know, it kind of grounds the patio a little bit. So I think it was well worth the price that we paid for it. Oh, well, that's nice. Yeah, I, I would love to have one. And I just even like to put it on, if I, especially like on a Sunday, if I'm cooking in the kitchen or, you know, whatever, I'm in there for an extended period of time on the weekend, and I can see it. So I'll just put it on, even if I'm not sitting in front of it. If you have one and you can see it from inside, like Anita, you could probably, from your breakfast room, if you put one outside, you could just, you don't have to be standing next to it when it's hot. <laughs> Inside. So I can sit in the air conditioning. You can sit in the air conditioning. I just want to get this clear. Look out the window to my backyard and see the fire. Well, at in night the it's fireplace. so pretty. It well, really I pretty. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. Yes. Well, we're getting ready to. Uh, I want to do something in the backyard. So anyway, I don't know what we're doing, but it's just the grass is a mess, and I refuse to pay for. I am not doing those chemical treatments on the lawn anymore yeah. because I, they are terrible to the environment. We no longer fertilize the yard because it's just so bad. If it's a chemical fertilizer, it's so bad for the environment. So we've just stopped doing it. So our grass doesn't look so good right now. So anyway, we've got to figure out what we're going to do. Yeah. Okay. So here's something. We could, let's have a podcast episode about that then. Oh, yes. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. And I can get everyone's ideas. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to do. Okay. So the all about you, isn't it? Oh, this whole thing. If only it could be. (laughs) Uh, The, uh, what about a pet shower? Now, in theory, <laughs> this is one of these things, I think it sounds fantastic because, you know, we, we used to have a, a West Highland Terrier who got into everything and who was constantly needing to be hosed off. But it's enough, one, other, one of those things that it's going to take up space in the house. And then what if you're selling it? Then when you're selling your house, it's going to be a negative, I think, for someone who does not have a dog. Yeah. If you don't have a dog, what is it like? Toddler shower. <laughs> It's, and you have to have a toddler. Oh, God. And I have mm-hmm. a collie who's big. Right. But she really doesn't get dirty. There's something oh, about her hair. She's such a just, lady. Oh, yeah. Well, she's not. Yeah, she would not be going. Well, I have the three little ones. And once in a while, uh, you know, I'm every sort of in between a groom, I'll them. Oh, wash you can them. pop them in the sink. You can pop them in the sink. I, sometimes I just put a tub outside if it's warm enough, and I'll do that. But, you know, most of the time they need a haircut anyway. So, you you know, I take them and they, I'm not going to cut their hair. Some people do that, but my guys, I can't really do that. So I don't know. I totally agree with you. Unless you're selling to a real dog lover, that's so niche. Like maybe somebody would pay more for that if they were like, oh yes, you know, I breed dogs. This is fantastic. But eh, for everybody to have that space. Now here's one everyone can use, a wine fridge. Uh, Well, you know, and we have one that's not built in. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's so many inexpensive options for that now. You can do something that's not built in. But again, if someone's buying your house and they're not a wine drinker, they may go, eh. They're so what? what? <laughs> well, they what? do exist. There probably. are people out there. <laughs> Some people, I guess, just use it for their Cokes or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, I've got to think about that. You kind of threw me now. I, can't I know. To think I'm about sorry. what I'm going to say next. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Uh I don't want to say it really. Maybe I should let you say it, but um, Carrera Marble, that was on the list of things in several of these real estate articles that I read. Um, you know, you say you got Carrera Marble. People say, oh, wait, 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 it etches. Some people claim it stains. Um, but apparently <laughs> it rings a bell and gets people excited to come look at your house. So, well, I'm, I'm going to add to that. Mm hmm. The, I, I do agree. I think that is going to help your house value unless there's some big fat stain in the middle of it, then it might be hurting you. If for if you believe in those sorts of, you believe Impossible. in stains on Carrera yeah. marble, whatever. Right. right. But I'm going to add to this, 
it doesn't have to be Carrera marble to increase the value of your house. If you have something that kind of is in the marble look family, I think that also is going to help you. So I'm thinking, um, you know, just other things that kind of look like marble, you know, quartz, quartzite. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I think any kind of light colored, neutral countertop Mm -hmm. is going to help. Right. It, it done nicely. I think there's some bad looking uh, man made countertops, but the, there's are some very nice ones. And now there is an option to get a countertop that looks like marble that's actually porcelain that looks pretty good. So oh. that's an option too. Oh wow! So I'm thinking even that. Yeah. If it looks similar to marble, I think it's going to help you. What do you think about this media room business? Like some of these articles were written a few years ago and you think, and then we have one that was, that we're going to talk about that specific to 2020 in a minute, but uh, the media room popped up on a few different, um, you know, fairly recent uh, articles in the real estate community. Uh, You know, there's a lot of people I, not I, that I necessarily know personally, but you know, there's a lot of people in the industry here in LA and a media room seems like a thing that you see a lot. I think I think they're awful. First of all, you know how we feel about natural light. Like, even if I'm watching a movie, do yeah. I really want to be in a movie theater in like you know like a, a tricked out Archie Bunker chair? Like, no, with a cup holder. <laughs> okay. No. Now let me just say this: I have said no. I am not you know that kind of person. I don't like those. <laughs> But we were furniture There are shopping. two kind of people in the world. I know. No, I, I still don't like I, I still don't want them in my house. But I was at the store, uh, the furniture store the other day, and I sat in one of those because my feet were tired. And I thought, <laughs> just, just this here is a the minute. most comfortable chair I've ever been in. a moment. Now I'm thinking, I can, I'm like, okay, I can, I get it now. I get it. It is comfortable. Yeah. But it does have an essence of saying, I've given up on life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like wearing stretch pants. Like my dirty jeans, sweatpants you know? that sometimes yeah. when I don't feel good, I want to put on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. anyway, I, I get that. So I, I mean, I'm with you. I think devoting a whole room to that, unless you watch a lot of movies. Yeah, unless you're in the industry and you need to preview all these movies, you know, so you can vote for the Oscars. I don't know that you need that. But hey, you know, maybe some people, maybe that's how they entertain. You know, they have a few people over and they watch a movie. But I don't know. I mean, you know, everybody can watch a movie on a pad now. But here's the, so so if it's just a situation where you have the furniture in there, right? I think that's fine because then someone could just take the furniture out and do something else with it. But I've seen some that have these big screens and a stage. Oh, yeah. No, I'm talking about a full blown, like a big screen. Oh, heavens, like, no. And it's, um, and then Sound it's tiered, like you're at the theater. Oh, no, no. Yeah. No. Possibly a popcorn machine and vendor in the corner. They have all that <laughs> kind of stuff. So Anita touched on this earlier, the garage. I, you know, these are features now that, you know, people are really looking for now. Like, this is supposedly what the features are for 2020 that people will be seeking out um, when they're looking for homes. Garages. Important. You know, again, maybe it's something where... They're not necessarily going to put their car in there because, like, nobody around me puts their car in the garage. Everybody's converted their garage into something else. Oh, uh, really? Even if it's just yeah. the ping pong table is open in there and mm-hmm. the kids play in there, it's mm-hmm. usually not housing the car. Really? Uh, large kitchen. We talk, you know, even if it's not. So why do you think there is that because they just want the space to use it as a living space? I think so because I think a big thing that's going on and and this is what my friend said who's really such a, if anybody lives nearby and needs to have a real estate agent you need to speak to my friend Mm -hmm. Lynette but Lynette said most of the people, especially people that are, um, you know, maybe it's their first house, right? So there's this whole first or maybe second house she's saying because I think over the course of time, right, people thought, oh, it's a starter house. And then you, the expectation was you're going to move to another house. Mm-hmm. And then you're going to maybe even move to the forever house or the mm-hmm. really big house and, you know, the, the golden retriever and five kids or whatever you're thinking in your head when you're buying this house, right? And then people, you know, they, oh, maybe they're then they're doing the downsize thing. But she seems to think, because she's very up on trends and things like that that are going on for her business, is that people now that are starting out, they don't think of it as a starter house. They kind of think about it, that's the house they're going to be in. 
really? for the duration. You know, now this is beyond the condo. This is beyond the first. This is like maybe you've decided to, uh, you know, get married or live with somebody and you're in a relationship where maybe you're going to have a family or adopt or you're going to have pets or whatever you're going to do. But, you know, you're thinking this is like a bit more of a, a permanent step. They're not necessarily thinking like, oh, this is a five-year plan and then we'll move. So they're looking for space to grow in the homes that they're choosing. Well, I think that's smart. Yeah. Right? Because the, the underlying concept she's saying now is that people are not thinking that to move. Because, you know, also, here's the thing. I think for a long time, there was, you know, the, kind of the American dream on steroids, the big house. You mm-hmm. know, let me look at all the big mansions, right? Oh, and like yeah. people were all over that for a period of time. But this, the pendulum again has swung all back. And, you know, what was that? Several years ago on the cover of House Beautiful, small is the new big, right? And now it's just continues. It's Yeah, it swung again. So then it was go to the McMansion, then it was go to Tiny House, and now it's somewhere in between that's just right. Right. So maybe mm-hmm. their garage you know, gives you an opportunity to put a garage apartment in or gives you an right. opportunity to make it into an office or, you know, or to use as it's intended. Well, I will say this. If you're building a new house, if you're building a new house, what we did was when we first built it was we just went ahead and put in an unfinished garage apartment above because it's so, that's so expensive to rip the roof off right. and add on a second story. So if you're building, just go ahead and do that. And if you don't, because it's not that much more just to do an unfinished room. And then you could use it for storage if you don't end up, you know, put a floor in it and you can always use it for storage if nothing else. But then it's there if you decide later on, if you have money later on, then you can finish it out. So within a year after we moved in, we were like, yeah, let's finish it out. But anyway, you could decide later. Right. A dedicated laundry room is another thing people are looking for uh, when they're you know going to be looking anyway in 2020. Um, that's a really nice thing to have. So maybe if you can even squeak one out someplace. People are also looking for homes with basements. Again, this room to grow idea. I think it's, you know, this is what we're seeing. Well, the house either has a basement or it doesn't based on like here – Houses don't come with basements. They don't have them there in California, do they? We have a very small basement. Some people do have what they call a California basement, which is basically a small basement. Okay. Um, you can't have basements here. Oh, because of the water? Yeah, the water tables. Yeah, because it would be an indoor swimming pool at some point. So Oh, well, that's, that's not, not on the list. So <laughs> no. you don't need that. No, but the, no, but I think that your point is, is, is well taken, though. If you have a basement... If you finish it out, right, that is going to really increase. Right. Hey, that's where the kids can play. Oh, this yeah. is great for sleepovers or, you know, when my mom and dad come to visit, whatever. Again, the room to grow idea. Um, open floor plans, very popular still in 2020. And um, walk-in master closet. Well, that feels luxurious. I'm going to throw out just a few quickie things yeah. here, too, to, to wind this down. And these are things that are not expensive. These are just quickie things you can do that aren't going to be a big expense. Power wash your house, repaint the front door, and swap out dated light fixtures. So Good those are some idea. easy fixes. You want to talk about the hot topic? Uh, yes. So this is a topic we found on eldecor.com, and it is about some apps that you can use to help you decorate. So I thought this was very interesting. Uh, Of course, they mentioned Pinterest, which we all, I mean, if you don't have that on your phone, you should get that one. That one is, (laughs) I'm sure you are. If you're listening to this, you know about Pinterest. And then there is also the House app. So that's another one that you can have on your phone and use. That'll help you finding products and saving photos. So those are some. But did you see that Ikea is going to have an app? I know, Ikea Place, and it's a free app. Yeah, so this one's coming. That's going to be very exciting where you can try out their products. You can upload a photo of your room and then try out these 3D model of the furniture pieces in your room. So I'm very excited about that. I think that's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm, you know, I have to say, (laughs) I'm not a huge fan of any of these. Not that I've tried them all, but I have Mm -hmm. tried some and I've tried various apps I don't know just even and I have the big phone I don't know it just I don't use Pinterest on my phone really um I like to see it on my computer um you know I don't really use my phone for apps that much just really like Uber and you know Postmates and things like that like I don't I don't really diddle around on apps on my phone I don't 
Who are you? How- I, I don't really. I don't really enjoy it that much. I, well, yeah. I mean, I'm using the weather app and Yelp and my banking. and No, no, I don't do any of stuff. that. No? No, I really don't. And the, oh, okay. I have a couple of apps. I don't, you know, I just, mm. but these are interesting. Um, some of them I thought could be pretty cool. Um, the one that I thought was probably the most interesting is not the, I think when you're trying to find colors, there was one about uh, I think it was Color 911, like giving you palettes. First of all, mm-hmm. you had to pay for it. I think most apps you shouldn't have to pay for. I mean, most of them are free, and you're probably going to get some advertising in there anyway. Um, but I think trying to pick a palette on your phone, I mean, it's even worse than trying to pick it on your computer because mm-hmm. all, all the phones are going to be different. And you're talking about really specific tones and undertones and all of that. Small space to look at. Yeah, I don't think that that's going to work. One that I did like is the, um, or like the concept of, is the color capture by Ben Moore. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of like Shazam, if anybody knows what Shazam is. Like my girls do, and now I, I do do this. Uh, if you hear a song somewhere that you like, you could just Shazam it and it'll tell you the name of the song and who's singing it. And so Benjamin Moore's color capture is similar to that. If you see a color in life that you love, say some periwinkle pillow or something like that, or it doesn't even have to be a pillow. It could be a flower, just a color that really speaks to you. And you're like, oh my gosh, I would love this to be my pop color. You can hold it up to it. It'll color capture it and it'll give you uh, a Benjamin Moore pink color that's very similar or, you know, hopefully spot on with the color that you captured. Now there is the Color Snap uh app from sherwin williams but i'm just looking at it it did not get great reviews no because it's very hard to do the color right Mm -hmm. it's not that it's the technology is not really there yet yeah so look at the but sherwin williams pro that one has more reviews now i haven't i'm just i was just looking while you were talking so i don't know that one might be one to check out because that one actually has uh, very good reviews. So that one might mm-hmm. be one worth checking into. Yeah, I mean, I think the IKEA one could be interesting because you're looking at a specific item, like say that you know chunky wicker chair that we really like, then you can sort of see it and put it in your room. But you know, you're taking a picture of your room, then you have to move stuff out of the way, right? And you take the picture of the room and then somehow you drop in this thing. I don't know. It just seems like, I don't know, more, more fluff than substance. I don't know mm-hmm. that it's really going to help you that much. And you're going to take a long time to do it. I know that's what people were saying. I think one of one of them too, and it might have even been a different one from Benjamin Moore, where you basically like coloring in your wall a color. And people were saying it's so tedious. Well, I have done that many, many times on their their website, not on an Oh, app. maybe that's where that was on the website. It is so tedious. Yeah. I have done that because it is nice to test out a color But I think uh, you might do better just to print out a picture of your house and then just use some colored pencils or something might be actually easier. Yeah, or just just order a sample eyes and stick it on your wall. Yeah, but that's not going to give you the whole view of how the whole house is going to look. But that is very tedious because you have to select the areas. And then, you know, there's a tree in front of your house. So then you're kind of going around limbs and things. And and then there's porch railing. And then you've got to select each little space between each Right. spindle right so yeah i don't know they're 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 kind of i don't think the technology is there for those to be really helpful right now and uh, i am a person who loves apps my phone is full of apps but these apps uh on that i saw listed here i don't think i would actually use because that's the thing they have to be valuable apps like my weather app i want to know what the weather is i yelp i use that but i don't see these being that helpful yeah so anyway yeah, so but interesting to know that they're out there, and maybe they will improve over time. I think the next generation might be worthwhile. I mean, I keep my eyes open right. because I don't want to miss it when they have a good one. Well, they're obviously trying really hard. I mean, these color things came out a few years ago, and they keep trying and keep trying and trying. So maybe it'll get better. And obviously, you know, depending, it all depends on the kind of phone you have, too. So the phone technology, like you were saying, the iPhones are going to have this 3D imaging soon anyway. So you're not going to need all those apps that do that. You'll be able to mm-hmm. do it yourself. So I have, I'm excited about my crush. So you tell me, uh, tell me it's yours and I'll tell you mine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're excited. I'm, why don't you just go ahead and go? Okay. Well, it's, I love 
I love reading and I don't have that much time to read, although I've been making more time for that. I've read a couple of good books already this year, but, uh, and I love listening to podcasts, but I do walk a lot now and, you know, especially with the dogs and I'm trying to, to get out every day and go for a pretty substantial walk or a run. Um, and so sometimes you just want to be told a story. And so I found the New Yorker fiction, uh, podcast and it's not, you know, topic driven. It's someone just reading you a story. So, I mean, some of probably people do audible and things like that. I don't really listen to a whole book on, uh, you know, on my phone or something like that, but I found this to be so enjoyable. And I just recently listened to a, a John Updike story called the other side of the street that I was just so enchanted by. I uh, kept me walking even longer than I wanted to. And it was read by a, a very famous uh, writer as well. And um, there's a little discussion in the beginning about the story. And then it just he just goes into reading it. And it's a very simple story. Not a heck of a lot happens. It does involve a house. Uh, but John Opdyke is just such a wonderful writer with such uh, – vivid detail in uh, he describes so things there's beautifully. a different story every podcast yeah episode? so every oh. week uh, or it maybe it might even be every month but there was a bunch of them so you could have time to catch up so uh, there someone uh, someone you know literary name will come on and read a piece of fiction that has been in the new yorker now i think this john updike story was in in 2008 or something like that. So it's not even necessarily a current thing. So if you are a New Yorker reader, it's not necessarily something you would see in the magazine currently. Uh, but definitely worth checking it out. Um, I've listened to that and then I'm halfway through another story that I'm really enjoying as well. So I'm just dipping my toe into it, but I think it's pretty great. Uh, and we'll put the link to that in the show notes. Wow, I'm going to check that one out. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add DOSE to your wellness regime. DOSE is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.com co slash dtt and use the code dtt that's dose daily dot co dot co slash dtt and use the code dtt 
And I have a crush, but also I wanted to mention while we're talking about crushes is our dear friend Lucy at Craftberry Bush is a fellow um, influencer blogger. I mean, she's got beautiful artwork. I mean, does has she just have some of the most beautiful drawings and paintings? Yeah, she's been blogging for a long time. So her blog is called Craft Fairy Bush, and she is a beautiful artist. Um, such delicate detailing, flowers, birds, just really charming, lovely work. Right, and so she had an Instagram account of, I think, about 140,000 followers, and she just got hacked, and it's just all gone, and so she's having to start over from scratch, but, uh, and so I wanted to mention her because she's a fabulous account to follow, and it would be helping her out building her account back up, so uh, she's now on there. I think she was Miss Craftberry Bush, but that's the account that got hacked. I think that one's even gone now. So if you look for Craftberry Bush, you'll find her. So you can give her a follow, and you'll have a lot of lusciousness showing up in your feed. And it will be helping somebody out who's had a very unfortunate uh, event happen. And I'm going to throw in my uh, crush. I have an item that I used from for my tea that I had at my house. And you would think that I have all the accoutrement that you would need, but no. I wanted one of those three-tiered tea servers. Oh, I always liked those, yeah. Well, right. I had the kind where you put the plates on, but I wanted the one where it's just the handles in the center and you can't change out the plates. And I found this really charming pink one. It also comes in turquoise on Amazon. It got here like the next day, and it was just exactly what I wanted. And it was super inexpensive, and I'll include the link to it. Uh, So... It was, you know, I don't know, like $25, something like that. It was very inexpensive. You know, the price change was all the time, so I don't know what it'll be when you get this. But it's it'll be a good price, and it comes really quickly. And I, I just thought it was so pretty. So yeah, it worked that's out a nice well. thing to have, you know, to, to pull out. Yes. I mean, well, and, you know, just even if you're having some people over for dinner, if you have some little desserts and you put them on there, they're just so impressive. They're, yeah. They're, they're going to be so impressed. It's going to look so delicious. Just wowing just, them. Yeah. Give your yeah, table just, a little height. It's nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of a feast for the eyes because you you enjoy food f- with your eyes first and then with your, you know, tasting it. So that makes it just that much more pretty when you're presenting it. Okay. Another thing that we're going to use our eyes for is to answer Rebecca D's question. So Rebecca was listening to our Perfect White episode. We could link that in the show notes too. I'll make a note of that. Um She is loving the podcast. Thank you, Rebecca. So nice of you. Painting her fireplace, built-ins, and walls. She has a cherry mantle trim and floor that will remain. It's a pretty low-light area, and she's going for sort of a cozy, creamy look. The question is, should she use the same white on all the surfaces? That would be the fireplace, built-ins, and walls. And if so, should she also include the ceiling or do the ceiling in a different white? So the question is, should all the whites be the same? Well, you really just boiled that down, didn't you? (laughs) That is my gift. That is your gift. And mine is the opposite. That's why we get along. Okay. Yes. That's right, Nita Jean. That's the question. Should all the whites on the fireplace, built-ins, and walls be the same white? And then what about the ceiling? Uh, okay. Well, my thought on this is it that it depends on kind of what you're going for. I've seen houses that have a lot of molding where each molding is done a little different color and it kind of shows off the molding. And well, it can and here be- you go. No, listen, the, but the cherry mantle, trim, mm-hmm. and floor are going to remain cherry wood. So we're talking fireplace, built-ins, and walls. Right, right, right. But that's just, I'm I'm saying this one house had a lot of different trim Mm -hmm. that was painted different colors. I'm not saying she's painting them, but but there's several different surfaces that we're talking about. Right. So I'm saying you can do different colors, but my feeling is, I mean, this is my personal approach to life is simplicity is best. And I also think it's very practical. So I would go with the same color for this reason that... Uh, you just have one can of extra paint versus, I don't know, three. There's one color to remember. Uh, When you pull out the white paint, it's not, is this the right one? Yes, it is, because it's all the same color. And 
I think a lot of times you have some subtle differences and they're really not noticed. Or maybe sometimes they, some of the whites don't play well with the other whites. And ding, ding, there, yes. If you have one with a yellow cast to it and one that's more pure white, the yellow cast is just going to look dirty. So for all of those reasons, I prefer to use all the same color. But, you know, some people choose not to follow that and I think that's fine too but that's what I would do yeah I 100% agree if I was doing all these things white which I did do all these things white in my house I would definitely use the same white paint I don't think it's it's adding anything and in fact the the uh it might be detracting from what you're trying to do exactly what Anita said a lot of the whites don't play well together particularly if you mistakenly do a warm undertone with a cool undertone white you're going to be in trouble um so uh, going for cozy in a low light area, I would do a warm undertone white. So Rebecca, um, I'm glad you were listening to that episode. We give a lot of information in that episode about picking the right white and what the undertones, how they play. And um, we give examples of specific examples of colors that you could choose. Uh, where I might change it up a little bit is the sheen. So I may do the fireplace and perhaps the built-ins in a semi-gloss but the same color. And then maybe I would do the walls. I like a velvet um, because it is a little bit easier to wipe off if you need to, but you could uh, certainly do a a flat or an eggshell. All different paint companies refer to their sheens a bit differently. Um, So that's what I would definitely suggest. And as far as the ceiling is concerned, I'm not a big fan of ceiling white. I think that's kind of like, you know, a little bit, what did you say before? Like giving up? It's kind of like, you know, it's ceiling white. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But why is that ceiling white? And ceiling white is going to have, a, I think, a, always a blue cold mm-hmm. undertone. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's not going to play nicely. So I would do your ceiling in that room uh, exactly the same color and in the same sheen or finish as you do the walls. Hmm. There you go. So you would do the wall color on the ceiling. Yeah. The white. Oh. Yeah. 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 That sounds great. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. As always, we enjoyed it. And remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon. 